Hi, everyone, and welcome to Sustainability Explored. Every week, this podcast navigates a variety of topics through interviews with the most disruptive minds in the field of sustainability, turning their experiences working behind the scenes into actionable advice you can apply in your life, no matter your background. My name is Anna. I am an environmentalist, sustainability consultant, and the host of this show. Today I am with Robert Milder, the founder and the principal inspirer of the brand called Van de Sant, right? You're producing furniture made of plastics collected in marine environments. Robert, this is extremely you know, up to date and extremely exciting topic. How are you doing today? And tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for having me on your on your podcast. And um, yeah, I mean, first of all, we are doing fine here. It's a, it's, it's an awkward situation at the moment with the COVID crisis. I mean, we, we, we only do Zoom calls. So that's why this is also really perfect. Well, about about our, our furniture company, about our furniture and about what we do is, um, well, we design and manufacture affordable, sustainable furniture made from uh, waste streams and ocean recovered plastic. Um, so it's not only the plastic. Eh? If, you, uh, if you have your furniture piece at home, uh, that piece, you have normally a wooden structure. We make it from recycled content, recycled plastic. Then you have the recycled foam. Uh, what we use and we use the the post-consumer textiles which is made into new fabrics so the whole piece is almost for 100% um, from recycled material and after the end of life cycle it's uh, circular so uh, it can return as a as a uh, resource back in our manufacturing structure so there's no waste how did you come up with the idea? I checked your appearance on Dragon's Den. You were yeah. there trying to convince the jury. But what I noticed, you have already came mature in a way. Already came not just with an idea and, oh, I think yeah. it will work. You were already an established businessman. So let's go back a little bit. And can you recall the time when you, you were, what happened when you thought, oh, there is this resource. It's not yeah. a way. Let me turn it into something cool. How was it? Well, well Anna, I'm going to try to make you the short version, or else we will talk for hours. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been quite a while. It's been around nine nine years ago, I guess, um, that I um, tested with some some um, some materials for the furniture. I want to make furniture, what could stand outside, but what also made from from recycled content. Well, I've been in quite a lot of places in the world and I really saw my own eyes on how it is if you're on a beach, if you have plastic on the beach, if you have pollution in, in the streets. I mean, in Holland, everything is well organized, but in other countries, yeah, that's that's not a done deal. Eh? You have some islands in the world who uh, have plastic on the beaches which doesn't even come from the island. It comes from everywhere around the world. So... Um, yeah, I, I always had a graphic design company, and and by by coincidence, I, I stepped into furniture companies uh, in the furniture business, and um, then I realized that yeah, something can be changed. That this is really a, a traditional industry always have been, and there's only been changes in designs, never in in a, in a material use. I mean, not in a normal way. Um, you see nice designs who are made from from plastics or metals or, or something. But I was really, I really wanted to make something what there's a product, what people every day use. So that's why our furniture, I mean, mostly we are compared with plastic furniture, but it's not. It's just the sofa in your home made from recycled content. Well, after some testing, years of testing and years of doing stuff, I, I, um, I went to the US. I, uh, with, uh, I, I had a customer in, in Costa Rica and I was thinking, you know, we have to make it in the US, it's nearby lower down the carbon footprint um, and and see if you can make it in the land of opportunities because the U.S. is is a big market potential. The only problem was they, they recycling, there was not a done deal in the U.S. and talking about recycling was also, for your furniture, is, was also not a done deal. So uh, I think I was there for almost three years or something. Um, and uh, but anyway, the, the furniture was been sold. I had some small successes and, uh, and 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 some some really great things. 
But in 2016, I really started to communicate that my furniture was made from recycled content. That was the moment you saw all over the world, you saw the events, you saw seminars about what's going on with, with the pollution, what's going on with the climate, um, and what world we are li living in. And at that moment, I realized, you know what, my furniture is really doing something. Let's say it before it is only design furniture, it's also made from all the recycled um, content. Well, the past two years have been, uh, been quite um, uh, different because I, I came back to Holland. I, uh, um, I focused on the, on the corporate industry and hospitality. Um, so to get their mind changed, huh? to get the, 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 yeah, that putting furniture in your lobby or in your hotel or something can also be um, something good for the environment. Um, well, then COVID came, everyone worked from home. So we're now changing again our mindset to go to the consumer market. Um, That's crazy. That's crazy. But oh, you know, the project really gives hope. Yeah. I was just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Turkey. I could not get out of the water without a handful of plastic, a variety, yeah. plastic bags, um, coffee cups and stuff. It's great. Well, what am I doing? I'm doing just maybe a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of an action to collect yeah. just a little bit in my hands. Yeah. But it's insane. And I came back very down, very anxious yeah. about the, the problem. And there, when I found about your your story, your first, I was like, oh, finally, there is hope. Can you walk yeah. me through the process? Uh, do you work with recycles? How is the yeah, yeah. I step I mean, very quickly? The, we work with recycling companies because we are not a recycling company. We, we, we use the materials for our furniture. They make sure that, uh, I mean, it's collected by NGOs and by, and by volunteers and by staff and by um, um, uh, consumer waste, uh, what's, what's on the streets. I mean, there's a lot there everywhere. So uh, unfortunately... So it's um, not only marine plastic. It's, it's no, it's it's both. It's it's both because also uh, um, uh, from the river sites, people forget that a lot of plastic waste from the rivers goes inside the ocean. Everything what's, for example, I li um, I live here. I live here next to the river uh, nearby um, uh, German border, and I know as a fact there's a lot of garbage waste passing by every day here, but also from the street blows inside uh, which blows inside there so if if people can catch that already i mean it's also good to prevent to go in there so we use a combination of um so that's the whole process and then we process it into uh, sheets or uh, 3d printing that's that's really for the future 3d printing and um, um we use that as a basic frame instead of wood what you have normal if you open your sofa at home well, you, yes. you keep the cover of in the foam. It's, uh, it's wood and we make it from recycled uh, plastic. It's a different kind of structure because wood is stronger than plastic. So we, we took me really a year to invent something really good that fits. Mm -hmm. um, well, and the same with the recycled foam. Right? There is a lot of foam out there, but we use a combination of uh, denim fiber. Um, also with another manufacturer that's mostly used for... Uh, um, isolation from from housing um, and for the fabric we collaborate with a company from Holland named uh, Riblend and they um, they collect uh, post-consumer textiles our clothing and they fiber it again and they make a new thread and then they weave it into fabric any color what what we want um, but then is there the new piece of furniture and its design it's, it's just new I mean yeah it is it's true well, you will never run out of the of the raw material. That's for sure. No, no. Unfortunately, people say sometimes like, "Yeah, but w what are you going to do if the plastic finish?" Well, first of all, that's not going to happen in my life, and second of all, uh, our con our customer is going to become our supplier in the future. So everything what's inside the sofa is going to be back in our process. So the circle is is this is circle economy. That's how it should be with a lot of. Uh, items and products in the world is there any clash of ideas the recyclers that make money out of 
collecting this plastic waste and recycling it into something new do they come to you saying hey what are you doing here this is our piece of the market why are you oh no stealing our no. bread no? no i mean recycles would love to collaborate because they or else they cannot sell it you know or else they cannot sell the plastic or else they cannot sell the materials it's ridiculous that we send it all over the world for for something and that's i mean sending all over the world we, we do it with the furniture but that's also my vision in the future to have those local manufacturing hubs all over the world i mean you, you you've been to turkey and there was plastic waste so how cool would it be if we have a small, small production hub local with local um, uh, people with lo um, with waste streams from from the from the rivers and the oceans and, and stuff yeah um and be more closer to your consumer to your yes. customer so but that's a vision i i have already for a while i am discussing that with with a lot of people all, everyone likes the idea um but it's always about money it's always about investing I, we cannot do it alone we need to have partners and, and investors but and it is it, an idea yeah and it has to be economically viable what you yep. just described made me think oh when was it five years back i was doing my masters and my kind of master thesis was on electronic waste and then i remember i attended interpol conference in lyon about yeah, the illegal yeah. waste uh, e-waste movement so all our yeah. laptops smartphones and so on and there were representatives from all across european union and i remember a romanian recycler who was like we would love to have a recycling plant in romania we just don't have enough um, resource to recycle it like enough yeah. Yeah. To really start, to really yeah. start plants, the capacity would not be um, um, kept on the on yeah, the, yeah. the level. Yeah, and, yeah, that and that's yeah, and that's that's what you see more. And in, in our case, I mean, there is a lot of, I mean, people need jobs anyway, and and it is it is a it is a traditional industry. So most of the part how we do it is just like upholstering from furniture. And the whole process before that is new. It's is different, and and so we can train people all over our, all all over the world. And and but for this moment, that's also that's really frustrates me. It's too much talk. I'm I'm really what I did that time. I'm I'm like that. I want to do it. I I want to at least try it. You know, then you can see if it works or not. And um, but you also need to create a market. I mean, you need to sell your furniture. I mean, you probably saw Dragons then. The prices who I mentioned there, they were a little bit confusing because they, they added it a lot in the whole show. Mm -hmm. And that was back 2018 was the recording. 2019 was the episode, was aired. So a lot has changed, you know? And, and so pricing, there's always to talk about, negotiate. I mean, we, we are, it's not cheap. It's not because recycling and the whole process is more expensive than, uh, than normal uh, cutting a tree and use it for your frame. Um, so we are a little, little bit in mid-high range, but there is a market and it's everywhere around the world. Um, and also, if you go to circular economy, we're even um, talking, about, um, uh, talking about interior as a, as a service. So we give you the furniture, you can use it and you pay per month or something. It's some kind of, le some kind of a lease uh, structure. Wow. And then, but that's mostly that we con keep con control over the, over the furniture streams that we make sure that it comes back in our system um, but that, that's uh, the consumer is not ready for that yet or else you yeah you get those lease constructions uh, but it needs to be a circular lease it cannot be that how it is already with a car or something that you lease your car it, it has to be uh, different but all the financial financial institutes needs to help with that. We cannot do it alone, and we and even more if we work uh, worldwide and not only focusing on Holland, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a journey to go. Yeah. Tell me about the price. It's true that uh, in Dragon in Dragons Den, yeah. the number that was mentioned was a little bit. Oh, I wonder really who can afford that. But what's the price now with all the technology and all the people working it has to go well, up to down 
let me say you yeah it, it, it went down but you, you don't forget we work now with a few designers not all of them are now uh, uh, website yet and if you have design furniture you pay also mostly for design also right for designer we have to yeah. pay um, but if I compare making it it's double the price as normal traditional way at least plus we make it in Holland it's even more expensive but we are, I think, some 20% more cheaper. I mean, if you see the consumer price, what I mentioned, Dragon's Den, forget that. That's not the thing. That's almost uh, 50% uh, cheaper than, than how it was there. So that's already quite a lot. Um, plus, uh, which design, which, which model, that, there is a, bit, a big difference. But we are, we are cheaper. But things, I don't want to talk about cheap or I don't want to talk about expensive. I want to talk about you buy something for to change the environment and of course that costs money but we invested that again we invest all of it again to just make sure that we're going to be more um more uh, more affordable um yeah. and that's uh that's a process right the same as uh, as uh, tesla they were really expensive in the beginning and now they have cheaper cars and they and they go crazy and but they change the whole industry it's true Elon must change the whole industry it doesn't mean that i'm going to change the furniture industry but i think i'm quite uh, on the right path <laughs> you are you are you touched on the very uh, interesting thought uh it's still the environmental way of doing things is still more expensive than the traditional one why is that everywhere by the way not only in furniture yeah but it's it's i i guess some some uh items or issues or products uh don't have to be more expensive but they make it extra expensive but in our case again the work what we have with it is way more than you have the normal traditional way you know uh, even if you i mean we we're not there yet but if we we more support, more and more and more NGOs, then that costs money too because they collect the plastic. You understand what I mean? So you need to support some some groups on 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 yeah doing the work on on doing the part. It's not a good idea that we fly over the world ourselves to pick it up. But we have to have collaboration, and that cost money but but i agree i mean i i don't agree in green energy that that is more expensive i don't i have no idea i have no uh, knowledge about that but i believe yeah that that is more expensive than 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 normal no, uh, I mean, fuels, I mean the but... products you're trying to be more environmentally conscious for example super basic example in the kitchen instead of using the sponge you would the uh, like the industry industrial sponge yep you would use something more natural like loofah yeah 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 this is more expensive it's probably also more durable but yeah. we don't think that way we think that living an environmentally conscious lifestyle is in general expensive. more expensive <laughs> yeah and that's also for a lot of people um scary yeah because that's why they don't change Mm -hmm. I, I agree if i go to the supermarket for example and i want to buy vegan uh, vegan food or whatever vegetarian it's way more expensive and i don't understand why i also don't understand i know in, in our case eh, why, why is i can't explain the process uh, but yeah like you mentioned the sponge probably it's also costing more to make it i believe so it's 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 i think that really decides the price point but then also i mean the focus for our furniture in the beginning mostly was in the beginning for the high end reason why they have influence they they if we sell furniture to to uh, uh, some ceo from uh, in the us somewhere and he has it in his office or he has it at home people visit him and he will say look at this one this is made from this and this and this from from um, um, recycled material yeah. and people start thinking and they make it mindset and they go back to the companies and they say to the employees i want this at home i want this to do this i you understand mm -hmm. so because i believe that was the right path to take just aim for the high they can make a change in this world they can help to make a change even if they are also quite large uh, people who do pollution right they fly over the world with the private jets and stuff 
but it's a beginning and you can create create awareness on that and it's very difficult way more difficult to convince people who who have a low income uh, to say you know what you need to change you need to use that other sponge or you need to buy furniture from van der Zand. no they have other things in mind they want to make money for th- for the, the family yeah so f- first aiming for, for that position and then like what i think that Elon Musk did the same he has now more cheaper cars he creates cheaper cars and he goes cheaper and he builds better and and yeah i think for a lot of things that's the same even that sponge what, what you were mentioning yeah yeah, yeah. things are changing now your changing. story is, is quite um, you know structured and nicely put what I want to know is the three obstacles you were met with in the beginning or along the way, let's just say. Hard. Again, again, we need many hours to talk about that <laughs> because as an entrepreneur, you only have obstacles. It's, it's even if you think that we are successful, now you have the COVID crisis. Huh? That, is, that is now a huge obstacle. So we need to change mindset. Um, yeah. Where should the I begin? Reason, but, you know, the reason I asked, I, I have yeah. this um, notebook, it's called Trekking Ideas. Well, it says yeah. Trekking Ideas, it's from Bosch Foundation. And when I started my entrepreneurial journey, I made a specific chapter called The Lessons I'm Learning Along the Way or yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Yes, along the way. <laughs> so, and then you have bullet points one, two, three, yeah. four, yeah. five. What things I learned so that not to repeat them later on. Ah, you know, oh, I didn't know I should do it this way. I take a note. Do you have three? Really smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, partnerships is, was one of my, uh, um, um, the, my adventure in the US. Uh, I had uh, partners, I had uh, business partners, not, not, um, um, th- th- they had to make our furniture. They had to build our furniture, but they didn't take me serious enough. So they they run with with the idea of the furniture can st- stand outside. So Robert is outside the country. We can make it also. So don't. I mean, you have to trust people, eh? but don't trust them straight away with your blue eyes. Um, make sure that you make sure that everything is really covered. Sign some some. NDAs and, and stuff to make sure that everything is well well done because yeah you make mistakes you you are too enthusiastic because you really have an idea and 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 then also about that idea that's the other thing what I realized I'm always open for ideas to other people it doesn't matter what it is but on the along the way people were not open for my idea and that was really frustrating people I need to get success. Uh, after I came on TV, you understand? The doors Why open. Is that the case? I mean, the, for me, it's so obvious. It's so wow. It's, this is the startup I would love to invest. Honestly, yeah. that's that's the feeling I had when I watched the Dragons Den. Why yeah, was but this it was so. It was that I had to say, man. It was not only for the investment. I go there also for the um, for the recognition. You understand? And yeah. that four, four of those dragons did an offer that was even like, whoa, I mean, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm on a good path. But I had those little successes in the beginning also, uh, from, from furniture to National Geographic on Times Square to, to the Ocean Conference uh, furniture on stage. Those were really great moments. But uh, before you come there, if you talk with just people, a lot of people think it's just furniture. You understand? You, oh, yeah, it's something in the house you sit in. Same as your sponge. For mm-hmm. the inventor of that sponge, it's great and amazing. And some yeah. people who are really thinking environmental, oh, this is great. Same with the furniture. It's just furniture. You understand? So you need to make it really special. You need to make the story really special. And probably, I, I, I compared a lot. Eh? Um, there, was, there was a really funny example. I had an interview on the, on the radio. And... Um, um, the, the lady was a little, I was waiting with the lady in, in some, some, some lobby and she said, okay, what do you do? Yeah, I make furniture. Oh, you're the guy from the plastic chairs. And then she started reading again, but she was a part of the interview and then she probably didn't know I was on Dragons then. And then the, the uh, interviewer asked me uh, how many people watch? I said 3 million. 
And then one of a sudden she woke up. She said, oh, I don't even have 10,000 with my podcast or something. You understand? Yeah. Like, Never underestimate an idea. Be it's interested true. in an idea. And if, if it at the end is nothing, okay, then you can walk away. But first show your interest. And that was also really a big hiccup from my whole process. Um, same when I came back. Yeah. And, and then, like I said, the, the COVID crisis is, uh, I mean, everyone has to deal with it. We're not the only one in this world. But change, people need to change, focus. Now we need to focus something else. But also we have the opportunity now to change the world because the world is standing still. The planet is, is putting us on a break. And now let's focus on what can we do really green? What can we do sustainable? Mm -hmm. Maybe buy furniture from Amazon. Is it now available for consumers like yeah, B2C? Yeah, it is. yeah but no, it's, it was always available for consumers, but we didn't put a focus on it. But people have to send an email. We are working on a, work on a web shop and all that stuff. But that's also, again, a path. You understand? Mm -hmm. Or oh, switch gears. Um, how are we going to do that? How? Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. I recently watched a very interesting interview uh, with the founder of a brand, like founder of a company, a, a rental of the clothes, a rental of the wardrobe, just like yeah. you mentioned, the subscription model, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she said, uh, people's biggest fear, females' biggest fear, is that these dresses would be non hygienic. Like, yeah. they wouldn't wear yeah. it because many people wore it. On the other hand, early on my, on my podcast, there was an interview on sustainable fashion uh, where the girl said, Claudia Shirakovsky, it was, she said, well, well, you're going to the hotel, they change the bed sheets for you. They don't put every time the new bed sheet. They don't, they don't leave the new one. Huh? Exactly. Is it the same with furniture? What is the people's, you know, second thought about recycled furniture? Do they ever express the feeling like, oh, it's recycled? It's, uh, I don't know, no. dirty, non-hygienic? No, that, that might not be the case. The only problem what I have, what I told you before, oh, you're the guy from the plastic chairs, but there's not plastic chairs. Mm -hmm. The inside structure is made from plastic. And the rest is just the same as any other. Firm. It's comfortable. And that was the problem. And that is mostly what the, people think. Oh, it's the plastic chair. So I hear, I hear him saying plastic. Oh, then you must be the guy from the plastic chairs. No, it's comfortable. And they don't talk about hygienic. But, you know, that's, that's a good thing that you say that huh, about the hygienic. If you open your fridge and you see the glass pot standing there filled with vegetables, the glass is from recycled glass, 85% almost. Mm -hmm. People don't care. People don't realize. And they don't complain about hygienic, but it is. It is recycled. Same as with the clothes. I have a jean, which is from a Dutch company called uh, Mud Jeans. And they uh, have that uh, circular um, um, uh, economy. Also, lease jean. I lease it. Mm -hmm. And it's made from recycled uh, denim. Perfect. And at the end of life cycle, I bring it back and I get a new one. But you don't hear me complain about hygienic because it is hy hygienic. Even more, recycled is even focused more on hygiene. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, what I'm thinking about is maybe the, the pictures of the dirty beaches, dirty plastic, yeah. and maybe somewhere in the back of at least my mind, even though I'm 100% pro recycled yeah, plastic, yeah. You turn it into the cycle compost something I, I was amazed by the idea of yeah. i think it was adidas uh, who made yeah. um sneakers out of recycled plastic so Fish i want nets. that exactly yeah. Yeah. but again too expensive relatively. Yeah. yeah but then you gave a good point because um because they it's you it's made from fishnets but the, the shoes were sold out so people didn't complain about hygiene because they know Adidas is a company who will make sure that's hygienic. You understand? But every company who is in the who is in the the in the in the in the sustainability uh, process of making products out of waste stream, they make sure that the product is clean, that it's new, that it's usable. So 
Yeah, I mean, again, Adidas, but there was a lot of uh, marketing campaign behind Adidas, so that's why it's also more expensive. Yeah. The How big is your team? We, we are just a small team. We work mostly with outsourced, <laughs> <laughs> but in Holland, eh? in Holland, just people around us, because you have the sewing, you have the, 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 the cutting, the, all, that, all that stuff. Uh, we have four shareholders, and I'm the one. I'm the the one on on the front uh, picture, front size. I'm doing the story, and I invented it. Yeah. How cool! Uh, Here is the question I also had: like business wise, did you open it? Did you start it with your own money, or you had investors from the start? Your no, own? I started with with own money. Later on, I get uh, get a small investor for the US. But um, uh, yeah, I, I started with with own money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, then I can say I started from the garage, eh? like many things. Say. It was not from the garage, but like many, many uh, uh, Microsoft and whatever, Apple. Um, yeah, but it is like that. It is like that. And But back then, again, recycling was not a done deal. Eh? Then that was at that moment, nine years ago, 10 years ago, people didn't realize. People didn't realize the, the waste and, and, the, and the, yeah, there were some people. But there were mostly the people uh, yeah, who really working on that field in oceans and, and environment. But yeah, 10 years ago, nine years ago, there was a, quite a, a challenge to convince people, no, you have to use this material. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work. Yes, and you have to use this material. <laughs> so yeah. Now, in the, really, out of curiosity, when you produce something and sell this inside of the European Union, as someone outside of the European Union asking, uh, do you have to certify the product or do you have to go through certain step? Uh, I don't know. Like government? Yeah, from, from, from the UK, there is, yeah, there is some, some uh, regulations, but they're also changing. And you don't forget that, but this is. Many products who made from recycled materials and stuff, we are entering a different area. So those, all those processes need to be, what I, my opinion is, need to be changed, um, reviews. Our standard is really high. Um, so people can also change that standard. Like, is your, is your furniture circular, for example? Is every part circular? Is this? We just recently had, uh, had from one furniture um, some report. And it was really a high score in, in everything because it was circular, it was fire um, 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 resistance because of the clothing was already fire resistance, you understand? Yeah. So that's also a really big advance and the foam the same. It, it was already that and it's only reused. Um, so yeah, but a lot of standards can be changed and including standards from outside the, the EU. And yeah, of course. It, it can be done, it has to be done, um, but do it in collaboration with us because we know what, what can be done and they can say, no, it's not possible. I mean, you, have, you work with plastic, is it toxic? That's all, that's all arranged already from the recycle company. There's no toxic inside. You understand? Yeah. It's cleaned, it's, it's, it's recycled, it's separated. The really bad part doesn't come in our furniture. Mm-hmm. So you separ- there are different uh, types of plastics. They go like one, two, yeah. three, till six, and then uh, another ones. Do you separate uh, what you really put into your furniture from what will never get into it? Yeah, yeah. If you have really high toxic uh, um, uh, materials, but the recycling company does that. Huh? I don't mm-hmm. have the knowledge, so far knowledge about every detailed plastic. Yeah. But the recycling company makes sure that we don't uh, get that stuff. But we can have a lot of really waste, you know, waste, waste, because it's, it's, you don't see it. You don't, it's inside the furniture. If you want to have really something luxurious, and we have, we have the two, we make tables. I don't know if it's on the internet. We make tables and the, the, the tabletop needs to be luxurious. So we use something really fancy with, with all kinds of inlays and stuff also collaborate with a company for that. Um, but that's what you need to be collected really well because you want to see it. But inside the furniture, I mean, yeah, and no one see it as long as it's strong enough and as long as it's again um, 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 recyclable. Yeah. 
Yeah. Looking into the future, what do you wish happens in the industry in general or in the legal field that really helps you advance, maybe changes people's perception and behavior? Um, first of all, we need to collaborate more with different industries. We can learn from each other, but we can help each other. That's, that's what I saw. Huh? I use materials which is not even thought about in the furniture industry, but I use them. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, and yeah, the mindset change. I, I believe people just need to see it, uh, how it is outside. Just go swim in Turkey uh, and swim between the plastic. You will say, oh my God, how can I, how can we live like this? And that will probably change the mindset of a lot of world leaders. If you drag them by the hair and say, feel it then if you don't believe it, um, that, will, that will be a great option. Um, yeah, and regarding our furniture, you, uh, the same, you have to feel it to, to believe it, that it's comfortable. Or oh, check the Dragon's Den movie, you see the people sitting comfortable on it. Yeah. Yes, I will leave the link in the show notes. Well, finally, to wrap it up, one piece of advice for the listeners of Sustainability Export. Don't give up. Don't give up your, your, your task, your view for the future. Thank you so much. Very strong snappy and brilliant thank you so much robert for being on the Welcome. show for sharing your story and your wisdom and viva recycling thank you anna thank you thank you so much for taking your time to join us today with this recording uh with this episode we did with robert just now and i hope you loved listening to it as much as we loved discussing the subject with my guest. Hopefully, hopefully you learned something new and got inspired to take a real action uh, where you are on spot. Maybe uh, you want to contact Robert if you have any idea. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Reach out to him or to me on LinkedIn. Uh, we are both easily findable and approachable. I'm going to leave all the links in the description of the episode. If you like the episode, Please subscribe, share um, on your social media, share with anyone who you think is interested in the subject and would like to learn a bit more. Uh, if you leave us a review on our Podchaser page, I will reply to you in person. That always makes me very happy. The guests, the listeners leave in their reviews. It's always very, very pleasant. I wanted to suggest some related episodes uh, so you can continue your education in a way uh, of the subject. So the first one would be Green, Inclusive and Open Economy or Why Sustainability is Not Enough with Ralph Term. Then the episode I mentioned about clothing and the fashion. The episode is called Sustainable Fashion, Where Are We Going? Interview with Claudia Sherokovsky. Another one would be impact investment and circular economy with Ron Gonen from Closed Loop in the US. And finally, one of the most popular one and the most, in a way, famous on this, um, on this podcast is the episode called Circular Economy Challenges and Systemic Change with Cleona Howie Del Rio from Climate Kick, a Spanish chapter of Climate Kick. There you will get an explanation of what circular economy is, how to achieve it, um, what are the main challenges, challenges and what's needed to, to get better as a, as a human race. Finally, reach out to me with any questions you might have. Nominate yourself as a guest or someone you think uh, who will benefit from appearing on the podcast and someone who will give some value to the, to the listeners and to the kind of a sustainability canvas that we are discussing here. I would also love to mention that we now have a YouTube channel where it was the same name where you can uh, virtually meet our guests and this interview is gonna land on YouTube as well. We have LinkedIn page, Facebook group, don't hesitate to, to reach out, to join, to engage into conversations. I'm trying to keep it as alive as humanly possible by me. So um, get, uh, get into conversation, talk to me. Let's discuss sustainability together. 
This was Sustainability Explored, episode number 63, season 6, and me, your host, Anna Chashil. Thank you again for listening, for being with us today and always. And until next time, next Thursday, take care, stay sustainable. Bye-bye. <music>